position in the parade. One of the features that you'll notice is the uh, large number of flute bands in the demonstration. This is one of the ways in which the character of the Belfast Parade has changed over the years. Uh, a number of the silver bands and indeed the pipe bands uh, have dropped out of the parade simply because of the length of the parade and uh, the weight of the instruments or the strain of playing the instruments uh, over a seven mile route. But I believe that uh, there are attempts now to uh, uh, strengthen the position of pipe bands. Well, uh, in the last year we've seen the inauguration of the North Belfast pipe band and uh, some of their representatives have been out at uh, some of the concerts during the winter and the band itself has played at, at concerts during the winter, but I have no indication that they intend to uh, participate in the 12th in Belfast this year. This is the view as we look down Bedford Street towards uh, Donegal Square at the Little Hall Library in the background. There's a very fine collection, I believe, of um, orange ballads in, in the library. Uh, the, the ballads are fascinating because they throw a, a sidelight on the ordinary people's view of, of uh, history in the early 19th century. And one of the themes that uh, recurs in the orange ballads that are in the Linden Hall Library are references to, to Napoleon Bonaparte. And of course, uh, there's a, a nickname for part of uh, the hills around Belfast, Napoleon's Nose. Napoleon's so nose obvious, obviously, all these things are linked together in some curious way. Well, we're just coming to the end of uh, Districts 7 and 8, and uh, number 5 district from Sandy Row is approaching uh, and will soon be on camera. Number 5 being one of the biggest districts in the order. They have uh, over 33 lodges in Sandy Row district, and uh, uh, the whole area has a great history that has echoed Orangism for generations. And uh, very, very recently, uh, the South Belfast...